Yeah, yeah, that's right. Time to unbox. Get that piece of paper out of the way here. It's just a simple little flap of paper. Get it away from me, because here I am, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. It's going to lift me out of the box. Uh, put me aside for a second here while we take a look at what else is in the box. Now, uh, it seems I've shed something. The box is a lot thinner than before, so let's see what's going on here. The box, the little box right under me has, uh, okay, got some documentation over here. Um, that looks all right, and then... The USB-C cable, all right, C2C connection, I dig that, I dig that. Um, wait, that's it? That's it, you're telling me the only thing that you really get in here is, well, there's the SIM tool, but uh, yeah, after that, you just get the cable? There's no charging brick or anything here? Uh, okay, I mean, I guess I guess this is, uh, this is how things are now. But uh, there might be a couple of other things that we should take a look at when it comes to the unboxing of these phones. So, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Uh, this is the unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, and also, I got myself the S21 as well. So, here we go. That's right, here we are with the unboxings of the Galaxy S21 and the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Now, before I get started, I do want to point out that these boxes are pretty thin, and by now, you should know the reasons why, but we are going to still go through the unboxing so you can actually see it for yourself. Now, the other thing I do want to say is, there's a lot of content out right now about Samsung stuff, even other unboxings, and I'm just really happy that you came to watch mine as well. I wanted to extend some of that gratitude to all of you, so if you're here hanging out with me, thank you so much. If you want to see even more content on all of this, and if you dig the stuff that I do here on my channel, consider hitting that like button for this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We're going to start off with the Galaxy S21 first. Uh, uh, this is going to be one of the first times that I can actually review the smallest edition in one of Samsung's Galaxy S lines, uh, because normally they just send the Ultra and be done with it. But I think part of the reason why this is the case is because the Galaxy S21 is pretty compelling on its own. Uh, there are a number of reasons for this. The colorway that you're going to see in a second, uh, the slightly new design with the camera hump, and then the fact that this Galaxy S21 comes in at a couple hundred dollars less than the Galaxy S20 from last year. Looking at the colorway, I got the Phantom Violet, which is really awesome. It's not to say that Samsung doesn't put style into their phones generally, it's just every time there's a new one and it happens to be this eye-catching, we gotta mention it and we gotta give it some props. Underneath the phone is the little box that has, like I showed earlier with the S21 Ultra real quick, uh, the little bit of documentation and then a USB-C to C cable. And that's it. That's what you get with the Galaxy S21. Why don't we go ahead and go into the S21 Ultra real quick. I'll show you the unboxing from a different angle. This is the unboxing I actually did originally, and then I recorded that fun little intro uh, using the phone. So the audio that you heard at the beginning of the video was actually from the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Again, the phone, but this time the Phantom Black. I know that Samsung spent a lot of time on stage talking about how the black color is like so awesome and whatnot, and even though we probably didn't need 10 minutes to just talk about one colorway, I will admit this Phantom Matte Black is pretty dope. And then like I said earlier, underneath that is the box that does have the SIM tool nestled in it with the documentation and of course the USB-C to C cable. So here we are with both the Galaxy S21 and the S21 Ultra. I don't have the S21 Plus, but we are looking at the bottom and top tier of this particular line, and they're all very premium. I will give a few thoughts on the S21 first. Basically what we have here is a smaller device with a 6.2 inch display, and it's at that display that you might already find some compromises in order to get it down to the $799 price point. This is where I find myself a little bit torn, because from a design standpoint, this is exactly the size of smartphone that I would generally like, but it was until 2020 being stuck inside and just watching stuff on screens all the time that I came to really appreciate larger displays for media consumption and gaming. But once you get into a phone this size, you remember what ease of use can truly feel like, and I gotta say, I really appreciate it. I mentioned that the display is flat, which will help with handling in some respects, but this one is also a 1080p or rather full HD plus panel. Uh, so you're losing a little bit of resolution on here, but they did keep the 120Hz refresh rate. And as you can see in this clip here, I made sure that it is definitely on all the time. It may not be 120 all the time, but it does feel very smooth going across this new version of One UI. Coming back to the camera hump, it's now like a camera corner, I suppose, uh, and Samsung has really been leaning into their camera humps, not being shy about the fact that, yes, it does house a lot of really big tech. The camera hump basically bleeds into the frame, which itself is a different color from the rest of the device. That's where you get the two-tone from, uh, which is very pleasing to look at. 
Oh, and one final thing, the backing here, despite this lovely violet color, this is a polycarbon, this is a plastic backing. So for some of you out there who see the word plastic, I mean, I know that some people get irked by that, but this still feels like a pretty premium device. I don't think anyone should look at this and think it's a cheap phone. If the Galaxy S21 still feels premium just based upon the way the materials were engineered, well, the S21 Ultra is a hefty device, and that's where the rest of that premium feel comes from as well. I think one of the reasons why this is such an attractive looking phone, despite the fact that black phones are really common uh, is because there's like a simultaneous uh, exuding of minimalism and then craziness. <laughs> you do get the matte black, which is really clean. I will admit that as much, but then on the corner, you have this crazy camera hump that again, bleeds into the frame, but the frame itself is also black. But that camera hub, man, you get all of these different sensors and all of them just look huge. Like this is the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra's camera hub just sort of shoved into the corner and you still get the same look of just these big sensors that you can expect to provide some pretty awesome results, hopefully. You get a 108 megapixel sensor, the ultra wide, and then you get two telephoto ranges, 3X, 10X. And then finally you have a laser autofocus which will address some of the autofocus issues that plagued the S20 Ultra from last year. And by the way, I can't be the only one that sees this. Uh, any community fans out there, I really think that this camera hum being in the corner like this makes this phone look like Kick Puncher, whose punches have the power of kicks. And then of course you're going to get it all on a larger display, 6.8 inches in this case, which usually is not my cup of tea. I'm not usually for the big displays just because of the handling experience, uh, but I've gotten used to it over the last number of months, so probably I will be okay with this one. There is a curve on this display, and while some people out there really don't want to curve at all on their displays, Samsung's been dialing it back little by little uh, in the last number of generations. Just during these first impressions, I do find the curve to be not too crazy. It doesn't bleed over so much that you'll have palm rejection issues. And of course, it's the expected Samsung display experience. I'm expecting this to be a very fun display to use for all things from gaming to media consumption to text reading, pretty much anything here, especially with that smooth refresh rate. Once I got past the setups on both of these devices, it was straight into One UI 3, which is based on Android 11. I'm going to do an overview of One UI 3 in a future video, so make sure you subscribe so you know when that video comes out, just to look at the software side. There are a couple of things I want to point out that I noticed in my first hour of using this phone. Uh, number one, the fingerprint reader, which has been enlarged this time around on all of the models, seems to be very quick. There are times when I can just tap that sensor and it will go straight into the operating system. This might be the fastest I've ever noticed the fingerprint reader is performing in any Samsung device. And just like with any phone, the moment I get to the home screens, I just swipe around a little bit. And when I went to the left, I noticed something very different. Samsung made it clear during Unpacked that they have a much closer relationship with Google this time around, not only making Google Messages uh, their main messaging service on the S21 models, but also adding Google Discover as the left panel on the home screens. This is kind of a big deal, at least for me, because Bixby Home was never really that bad of a thing to have on the left side of any Samsung home screen, but Google Discover is just what I'm used to on many different Android devices, especially since it might be tied to my uh, Google account. It gives me news and basketball scores, for example, just things that are more relevant to me than Bixby Home tended to provide. And then it gets more interesting from there because you can turn off Google Discover if you want to or just turn the whole panel off altogether. But then there's another option called Samsung Free. And it looks like it's a central hub for not only news stories that you can get a quick aggregate feed of from various publications, but there's a watch area that allows you to watch some programming across, I guess, free channels that might be available on the internet. Then finally, there's a play area that gives you suggestions for games that you might want to play. This is completely different from anything that I am used to from previous Samsung devices. The Bixby Home that I would usually expect is radically different this time around. The fingerprint reader being faster and the new home screens are things that I discovered in my first few hours of using these devices. I wanted to share them with you just to add some extra info tidbits uh, to make this video a little bit more useful for all of you. But nonetheless, I am done with the unboxing of these devices and it's time to get into my coverage of these two flagship phones. You can look forward to my final reviews where I give final perspectives and things like real world camera tests uh, by sticking around here on my channel. Let me know which of these phones you're actually really into. Are you going to go for the Ultra and go for the biggest, the baddest, the most camera-ist? Or are you going to go for the S21 with its colorful backing, at least in my case, the one that I got, but it is also the much easier one to handle at that smaller size. 
Just from first impressions, I will say these already feel like they're going to be very well-rounded packages with power across so many different aspects so that they can fit in so many different scenarios. But that's basically Samsung's whole deal by, by now. They make flagships that could work for pretty much anybody. It's just good that on the lower tiers, they're a little bit more affordable this time around. All right, I'm gonna get into these phones. Thank you so much for watching my video on the unboxing of these particular devices. I'm gonna go in and call it on this one before the video gets way too long. So thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, I'll just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.